been a while since the last time I did a sit down video. What was the last one? Oh, that's the gay one. Yay. Well, today we're not going to talk anything about gay related things unless Patreon is super gay. We'll find out. <laughs> Hi, my loves. Good morning. Welcome to another another video, another sit down video. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to put any like flashy inserts. So if you want to put me in the background, that's fine. Uh, I'm Fran. I'm an illustrator and I work and live in Brooklyn. And today I'm going to talk about Patreon because I think it's been a while since the last time I did a video on Patreon. I always get questions about Patreon, about losing followers, about platform not growing or questions and doubts about how to admin a successful Patreon account. So I am here to answer all of your questions. Uh, this is not an ad for Patreon, by the way. <laughs> I need to say that right away. I just, I just want to help you guys. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, also, I'm going to leave down below a question. It's not a question menu, but it's a menu of all the things that I'm going to talk about. So if you don't want to watch this massive video, you're, you're excused. You're, you're more than welcome. I'm not making sense. You can, it's okay. That's what I'm trying to say. Patreon is a crowdfunding platform that allows you, a creator, to make money out of subscriptions, out of milking people for their money. <laughs> Can you imagine? Patreon is a platform that allows you to uh, have a subscription-based uh, audience that subscribe to you and your content on a monthly basis. So um, you have you have tiers and pledges for uh, a certain amount of money, and people can subscribe to you monthly. So, for example, you in exchange of that juicy money, <laughs> you create content for your audience. In January uh, 2016, I created uh, my Patreon account and I started posting. Uh, people are very fixated on numbers when they ask me, when did you start it? How many followers you had? And I managed to track it down. So back in 2016, my loves, I had 40K on YouTube. I had 40K subscribers and I had 80,000 on Instagram. And I hate throwing numbers at people, like throwing them violently at you because I think even though they don't matter, I mean, they are important, they're not the most important thing when you're creating a crowdfunding um, account. So I'm gonna explain why. So I joined Patreon because I needed the extra money. I needed the extra money like my, my first goal was to improve the content and the quality of my videos. I wanted to go to museums and I wanted to buy art supplies at the time and I didn't have the resources. So I'm like the first chunk of money I'm going to dedicate it to my, uh, my YouTube channel and to make things more fun for not only me, but for you guys. And as my patrons started growing over the months, uh, I'm going to share all of these numbers, by the way. I suddenly not only felt super grateful, <laughs> but also I'm like, okay, I can actually start paying the bills and I can get a printer. That's the printer that I still have here with me. And I started making investments on my store and my business. And that was amazing. So right now I have between 2,800 to 3,000 patrons and that's a lot of patrons you guys <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i'm not flaunting although i can flaunt for a little bit i have three seconds <laughs> of flaunting i am so proud i am so proud you guys because that's a lot of patrons and i'm so proud of all the hard work that i'm putting into the community and to make sure that people are having fun and that i'm also creating awesome things and it's, uh, I don't know, I'm really proud and I just want to say that out loud that I am, it's so nice when the hard work pays off and I am, I don't know, it's, anyway, I'm proud of myself, but what can I say? So I think the main two questions that I get uh, from people about Patreon is when to launch. And I understand this anxiety that people feel because they want a super successful, explosive launch. They want to get all the numbers and all the followers the first month 
And even though, you guys, I absolutely understand the importance of a great, successful and powerful launch, I think it's more important how you do, like what you do on the long run. So people are going to join you and they're going to support you on a very successful launch. But I have, I have seen in this, how many years? Four, two, four, uh, in this, oh my God, almost six years <laughs> in this, but I've seen that in, in this almost six years that I've been on the platform that people tend to stay longer the more you keep updated the platform. And this, you guys, I've seen it a million times. I mean, I don't know a million times, but I've seen it very often that people tend to focus so much on having a successful launch. And then they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I have a really chunky good month that's amazing and then the numbers start falling down because they put all of their eggs on the launch baskets but then they neglect what is happening within the platform so people eventually tend to leave this top is really cute but it's it's making me sweat so hard the second question i get all the time you guys is how many followers i should get or should i have when launching my patreon account and yet again another myth or a myth in my understanding, but I think even though having followers, it is important, I think the overall presence you have had online so far is more important. And just think about it this way. Will you support someone who has been around for a month um, on their social media accounts? Or would you support someone who has been around for like a couple of years? And again, everything that I'm saying right now depends so much on the context because sometimes we run into a content creator that we really love what they do and they haven't been around as much but it's because you rely on other things that make you feel like you want to connect with this person like their work uh their personality and whatnot but usually when people open their wallets so to speak or they're um thinking about supporting you financially it uh you need to build trust with that person and trust come it comes in i think different shapes and sizes so trust could be being around for a while being um you know on the internet active for a little bit uh per maybe personality people if they click with your personality or you think that you're a good person or you're matching your core values with uh, your follower most likely they're going to feel in inclined to support you um, faster. So it all depends. Again, there are so many things that depend on each and certain creator and their supporter or their subscriber. But in general, that's how it works. Please stay tuned for the end of the video because I actually asked my patrons why they decided to join my Patreon and why, what are the criteria in which they choose to support a particular like creator or why they have been in my platform for more than a year or so. And I think the answers are very enlightening, so to speak. So stay tuned until the end. Sometimes I would like to remind people to put themselves into the patron's shoes. So for example, if you're wondering why your patron account is not growing or why no one is supporting your patron account, I, I like to ask myself like, which creators do you support? Why did you decide to support this creator in the first place? And how long did it take you to support this creator? And with those questions, I think it helped us to guide how we approach our account as well. I actually have my computer here and I decided to write down a couple of general advice for a successful Patreon account. Again, this was stuff, stuff that worked for me. I hope it works for you, but please take this advice as a grain, with a grain of salt, you know? Uh, I think my first advice is to treat Patreon as a client. I like treating Patreon as a client because it allows me to hold myself accountable. In the beginning, I was very loose with the pledges and I'm like, oh yeah, once a month I'm gonna do a Q&A. And by the end of the month, I'm like, oh man, I forgot to film the Q&A, it's fine. And then people started leaving and I'm like, why are people leaving? And it's because, bitch, you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent with the pledges and you have to be responsible with delivering those pledges because that's why people are subscribing. That's an important myth that we need to demythify. Even though people want to support you because of your work and because of who you are, they're gonna stay longer the more you update the platform within. Which leads me to the second advice, which is what you're doing outside of the platform is no reason for people to stay. I remember when I joined the platform, 
uh, back in 2016, there was this thing that, oh yeah, people are going to support you because of what you're doing outside your videos and your content and all that. And I've noticed that even though that's true, it's not a long-term solution. If you don't update your Patreon, people are going to leave. <laughs> Why I'm so nervous? I'm nervous because what I'm about to say it might sound very harsh, but please, please understand where I'm coming from. But no matter how much I enjoy the person's content slash art outside of Patreon, if I'm supporting someone and that person is never updating stuff on Patreon, most likely I'm going to leave. So I understand why people leave when you're not doing anything within the platform. You know, that's a hardcore truth, but it's, it's what I've seen in these years. This is something that freaks people out and I get it because I do freak out as well. <laughs> but people are going to leave you guys. It's okay. Please hold my hand, hold my hand, you guys. Uh, I don't know who holds someone's hand like this, but it's all good. So in my case, every month, I'm not joking, but every, <laughs> why are we joking about this? Every month, around 100 and 150 people leave my platform, leave Patreon, and that's okay. It hurts and it's hard not to take it personally, but some people have, their own shit going on and they can't support you for longer than a month. Uh, some people, when they start supporting you, they have it with a goal in mind. Like I'm only going to support for this amount of month, like this amount of time, or I'm going to lower my tier so I can support other people, or they simply have all their financial issues and they can't support you. I think the rotation of people and the amount of people you're losing on Patreon tends to be higher than in any other social media account. It is because there's money involved. And when there's money involved in a subscription, people tend to leave on a larger scale and a larger, larger number than any other social media that I've seen. <laughs> so don't freak out. I think it's a super important thing that I need to, I can't distress enough because it happens and it's normal. And most of the times you will have those people back within the next month. So usually by the end of the month, I will lose 150 patrons, but during the next month, I will bring them back. I mean, not the same people, you know, because you know, fuck them. Uh, I'm joking. <laughs> that more people are going to join. And that's, and, and that's why it's so important you guys to keep the other social media kind of like, running some way or another because it's because of the other social media that people are going to join. Please advertise your Patreon, but don't spam. I think sometimes people overdo it and some people like me underdo it. I think there's a subtlety and there's um, the subtlety of ads, the subtlety of promoting or self-promoting your work. I think it's a tricky balance because sometimes we're desperate and that's okay. Uh, sometimes we want more people to follow and we want to, you know, yell it and scream it out loud at the top of our lungs to everybody to join. But the more you advertise in an aggressive way, people are going to start, you know, not having a good feeling about this. The, 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 the way I naturally promote my account is on videos. Hello. I'm not advertising my Patreon right now. You don't have to follow me. Uh, I'm just talking about it, but oh man, now it's, it's gonna sound like this is a gigantic ad for my Patreon. It's not. But the way I like to promote it is, hey, by the way, thank you so much for my patrons because they allow me to buy this art supply. So like, um, pay the rent of this studio. When people see how you're spending your money and how much is being helping you, to create or to fulfill your content, that's such a rewarding thing because they feel a part of something. They feel like they're actually contributing to the way you're expressing yourself or you're conducting your business. And there's nothing more amazing to feel part of something, especially when you like that person, especially when you feel connected to that person. So that's the way I like to promote other creators like Khadija and uh, I think ContraPoints, they put everywhere, <laughs> everywhere else, they put everybody else on um, as like a credits by the end of the video. I've seen that a couple of times and it's amazing. I love to see my name if that's the case, uh, but there's different ways to do it. And I think um, there's always like subtle and elegant ways, subtle and elegant ways to do it. When I'm, which I'm trying to say is don't be a spam. I, it took me a while to follow this, my own advice, 
but please create pledges that work for you. In the beginning, I think we're very excited to have a Patreon account and we have to have, we want all the pledges. I think we get super excited about the prospect of what Patreon could become and that sometimes gets things very confusing and overwhelming for us because we could, I've seen people starting with Patreons, me included, with like, I don't know, seven pledges. And even though it's useful to have a wide variety of things, in the end, what we're doing, and me included, because I did it, is become, it's making Patreon a full-time job. And that's, that's not the main of, like, that's not the point of the platform. I mean, you can do whatever you want with the platform, but the idea of Patreon, or at least how I see it, is a platform that allows me to keep doing what I do. But if my sole purpose is to keep Patreon running and I have no time left to do my own stuff, that's not how I, how I, I you know, personal opinion, but that's not how I want to conduct, conduct my business, conduct my Patreon. So what I do is I try to create tiers or pledges that in some way they're also benefiting from me. So for example, I've always struggled, you guys, with public speaking. I don't know if you can tell. I get really nervous. English is not my main language. So I'm like, what if I can do some, like a pledge that could allow me to practice, practice my speaking skills. So I did the Patreon Q&A, which is great because people can ask, actually ask me stuff. And we have this like consultancy thing going on, like one-on-one, -on -one, which is super nice. And I also get to practice my speaking skills. Same with live streams. Live streams freak me out. And the way I see Patreon for me right now is a way to practice not getting as nervous during live streams. Um, before Patreon, for example, it took me so long to fill out one sketchbook because I never carved out the time to sit down and work on my art, to practice, to fill out that freaking sketchbook. But now since I know I have a sketchbook tour coming up next week, by the way, <laughs> I know I have to sit down and draw a couple of pages because I know it's something that it's coming up. Basically what I'm trying to say is having pledges that allow you also to grow and allow you to uh, push yourself to practice, to cover time, to do things that are important for you or that you want to work on. Do you know what I'm saying? So hopefully this thing is not only interesting to witness and watch and uh, enjoy as a content, but it's also useful for you as a creator. Like how can you make this the best out of both uh, people, both you and the subscriber? Okay, I wrote down in terms of pledges, I think the best idea is to start small and then work your way up and tweak as you go. So for example, I always recommend people to start with two or three pledges max and then see how they feel and then start adding or tweaking pledges. One time I realized, oh my God, I, uh, writing a newsletter is painful. And also I realized I never read newsletters. I don't, I, I just skip through, I rarely connect with newsletters. So I'm like, is there a way I can make this easier for me and for the person to enjoy? And I started doing podcast newsletters because I think I do better talking rather than writing. And there's something so, I don't know, soothing and cool about listening to the person's voice and laugh with them or cry with them. So, or for example, the live streams. Um, in the beginning, my live streams were only on YouTube. The only way patrons could interact with me was on the chat section. But now I'm doing my live streams on Zoom and it's been so cool to see other people's faces, what they're working on. So I think it's interesting to keep an eye on how your pledges are doing and if you think or feel that it's time to spice things up. I always encourage people to ask for feedback. If you think patrons are leaving and you feel anxious about it, or if you think patrons are not participating enough and you haven't seen their reactions in a while, it's super important to ask them, hey, how can I improve this? Hey everybody, it's editing Fran. <laughs> I forgot to mention that more often than not, we're victims of our own insecurity and anxiety. And when we are wondering if patrons are happy or if they're enjoying the content, it's also a nice thing for ourselves and our peace of mind to ask them 
if they're liking that content, if there's any room for improvement, um, what is the content that they're enjoying the most and whatnot. So um, not only this is good, like asking for feedback in the shape of like, um, I don't know, like a survey or a poll to calm our nerves and for our own peace of mind, but it's also nice because they feel included in the platform as well. So yeah, I just wanted to add that. So as the years went by and my patrons started getting more and more followers, I realized that they were connecting a lot through the platform. They were talking to each other, they were recognizing their names and their icons, and it was so nice to see the same faces kind of like repeat um, over the months and over the years. And that's when I synced uh, Discord with my Patreon. Uh, I've seen it happening on Twitch as well. Like you see the same people commenting and there's a sense of community of like the same inner jokes. And I, I witnessed, I, I saw that every time I've done a meetup. So I get really anxious when I do meetups, but the times that I've done meetups, the people who went to the meetup, they're still friends with each other. And I think that's a natural phenomenon that happens because when you're following someone that has your same sense of humor, your same core values, uh, I don't know, you guys like the same things and you like the same jokes or you have very similar experiences in life or you have the same, I don't know, identity, like sexual identity or like whatever that means, it's very easy to connect with another fan. It's very easy to connect with another audience member or a same follower. And I think it's super important to create that community, but that of course also entails you managing that community. And that is time that in the beginning, I didn't know how to admin. So I had to, so naturally I had to learn a lot about Discord because it's a platform that I've never used before. And I had to ask, help to my moderators. Thank you moderators for um, helping me with Discord. But it's been so, so, so cool to see that community grow and people becoming friends with each other. Okay, this is optional, but I've seen that people mention it a lot and I love adding extra things that are not necessarily included on my Patreon as a pledge, but I love throwing it, throwing them there just because. So for example, the illustration club, <laughs> A couple of years ago, I'm like, man, I wish I had an illustration club. I always wanted to have like a secret club and stuff like that with secret handshakes and, and shit. We don't have a secret handshake, but I wanted to create uh, this illustration club. It's not included on the pledge. Anyone can participate. We have challenges every once in a while. And that's something extra that people didn't know they were signing in for. And it's been super cool. Or for example, I started receiving things. I'm, I'm seeing my pile of mail here, but like I started receiving things on my PO box and I'm like, why don't I, I don't know, film a PO box unboxing video and I will throw that once a month. Or for example, we have like surprise live streams or uh, by the end of the year, for example, I am since 2016, I've been giving away a free printable calendar just for my patrons. And even though people, again, were not signing in for that shit, but they are so grateful when I do and I have the best time when doing it. So I love throwing extra things just because. The last thing I wanna talk about, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is about meaningful, the meaningful connection. That, that phrase we hear all the time on the internet and my queen Brené Brown also mentions a lot, is about how we as a species, as humans, were craving connection. And I get it, like after the pandemic and after everything we've been through, and um, especially as people who are constantly online, we wanna connect with other people. We wanna feel less lonely. And I think to create a connection with someone is tricky because, and I remember Khadija was talking about this on their last video, I'm gonna leave it down below. Uh, but Khadija was saying how, Khadija, your name baby, Khadija was saying how sometimes um, like creators rely and you need to have a very charismatic personality in order for people to connect with you. 
And I agree 100% because according to, according to the answers, um, I asked my patrons, why did you join my Patreon slash community? What made you stay, even if it's longer than one month? And why, what do you take into consideration when joining, subscribing to a, a creator on Patreon? And from reading the comments, you guys, the number one thread or the number one thing that all had in common is I like you as a person, which this to me, I think it's a great and interesting approach to this theory I have that right now we're trying to connect with the person, the personality more than what they're actually doing. I think now more than ever in life, we want to meet the person behind the art. And this is why to me, it's very hard to separate the art for, from the artist because we want to see, we want to meet the person behind their art. We want to see what their ethical standpoint is. We want to uh, know uh, their beliefs uh, politically, uh, about uh, lifestyle, about their thoughts on racism or misogyny or feminism and stuff like that. We want to connect with the person, with the art, yes, but with the person first. So that was an mind-blowing. The platform people mention the most is YouTube. And again, I'm not surprised because YouTube allows this. You can see my face, you can hear me laugh and cry. The, the, the amount of connection that you can get from YouTube, I think is way stronger than any other platform, probably Twitch as well. But I think YouTube humanizes people. And by humanize, I mean that it's easier to see their flaws, their vulnerability, who they are as humans, what uh, they do when they're not working or when, uh, the, what their apartment looks like. I think it's easier to connect with someone through YouTube and I think the, the length of the content is way longer so you have more chances to connect with that person and to bond that rather than, for example, is Instagram. One of the things that I saw in the most in those answers is I check how much they they have posted on patreon before deciding to subscribe or like support them financially another one is most if not all join because they have been following me for a while and either they wanted to see more or they wanted to support me because they wanted to give back to me because they felt like they owed that sounds so weird but i i know exactly that feeling of this person has done so much for me and for my life that I feel like I owe them. I have to support them. Another comment that I saw a lot was this one, and I'm going to quote this person. It says, the value price, quote, as for what I take into consideration, it's mostly, as I said, the presence and the entry price. For me, this person says, one video a month at $5 is too expensive. And if for $1, I get only a printable or a sketchbook tour, I'm not interesting by this content. I think pricing fairly is something that you have to pay attention. For most people, what I've seen is that no one is going to pay extra for an early release if they can wait a, like a week in order to receive that video. And another uh, comment is most people go for lower tiers because no matter how's the financial situation, they can always pay $1. And this also allows them to support multiple creators. And I think that's pretty much it. Man, I didn't prepare any like final thoughts or something. So I feel very unprofessional, but um, I think I'd said everything i wanted to say i love patreon you guys i think it's a great platform and i think now that we are so focused on the algorithm and instagram is changing so much and youtube again has a very tricky algorithm to follow it's so refreshing to see patreon as a non-algorithm platform it's a pa it's a platform that has no algorithm so if you subscribe to someone you're gonna see their <laughs> content popping up on the timeline so it's pretty nice to have one platform that doesn't obey what we have seen outside like on the internet so far there's something so nice about having a safe space a community that supports you 100 percent and uh, there's, again, no, you don't have to do clickbait. You don't have to do anything to please the algorithm. You don't have to focus so much on having like a killer thumbnail. And that is a nice peace of mind or like a nice, it's a nice place to be within all of this algorithm clicking um, chaos that the internet has become lately. So 
those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful. Again, this worked for me, uh, but but whatever I can do to help you, that's the that's the that's the goal. Thank you so much to all of my patrons for supporting my work. Again, you don't have to support me on Patreon. It's totally okay. You, by watching this video, are doing more than enough. So don't worry. Um, and yeah, my loves, I hope you're having a wonderful day slash week ahead. And I will see you next week. Uh, bye. Uh, bye. <laughs> and I have to do a thumbnail now. What could be a nice thumbnail? <laughs> <laughs> we like making money out of Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs>